Hey guys, Joe from joesphenomenal.com and today we're going to be talking about weight loss. More specifically, we're going to go over five things that you can do to help drop that weight and more importantly, keep it off permanently. So you ready? I'm pumped. Let's get into this. So just to give you a little bit of background information, my story started when I was 39 years old. I was 260 pounds. And uh, basically I was just shaving at night. I had a triple chin going on. And I just decided at that moment I was gonna start dropping weight. And the next day I started. And seven years later, I got down to my target weight. So I started at 260 when I was 39. And then when I was 46 years old, I got down to 168. So. Technically, that's 92 pounds. And I'll tell you what, at that point, I never felt better. When I was at 260, I couldn't really walk around a lot. I had a lot, a lot of chafing and stuff going on with my legs when I was walking because they were always rubbing together and I, I wore a lot of heavy material. I slouched a lot because I was always trying to hide that fat. And the sad part is that actually makes you look bigger when you're doing that. I had some medical issues. I was pre-diabetic. I mean, you name it, I had all sorts of problems. I snored really bad. Are you snoring while you're awake? And I also had a pretty bad case of sleep apnea. Now, a super abridged version of how I did it, basically, I just changed everything. I, I made a lot of changes over a long period of time. And over the years, I ended up losing the weight and eventually I got to where I wanted to be. And really, that is the attitude that you really need to take when you're losing weight. Don't try to do it all in one day. Don't get discouraged. If you're working at it and you're focused, you'll lose all the weight, I promise. And definitely you can take that from me because I'm not the kind of person that has all the willpower in the world. At that point, I had a really hard time doing really anything for myself. So to go down a journey like this and drop a bunch of weight, which is supposed to be one of the hardest things that you can do, I got through it. Honestly, it wasn't really that big a deal. So we're gonna share some tips here. And hopefully, these things will help you because they helped me. Alrighty then. Tip number one is that weight loss happens in the kitchen, not at the gym. When you go to the gym, you see a lot of people there. You see a lot of people there lifting weights, and some, some people are, are pretty big. They're big and muscular. But for the most part, probably 90% of the people that you see there are people that are overweight, especially after New Year's, because it's, it's that New Year's resolution. January 1st comes around, going to drop weight. Number one, every single year, everybody says they're going to drop weight and gym memberships go crazy at the beginning of January. People show up for three weeks and then you never see them again. And the main thing is that they're not getting any kind of results and that's because people are not watching what they eat. And that's so important. It doesn't matter what you do in the gym, if you ruin it at home, you've got no chance. Remember, the word diet is literally a four letter word. And the problem with a diet is that by definition, a diet ends. It has a beginning, you change how you eat, you reach your target weight, and then it ends. And guess what? You end up going back to exactly what you were doing before, if it's just a diet, and you gain the weight back, and usually you're gonna gain back more than you started with. If you wanna be real basic, you can cut a pie chart in three pieces uh, between your fats, your proteins, and your carbohydrates, and just kind of expand out the protein part and shrink down the carbohydrate part a little bit. And that will probably get you there, along with you know, limiting the amount of food that you eat, obviously. Another problem you end up with in the gym is that the cardio machine is not your friend. I don't mean that cardio is a bad thing. I just mean that the calorie count that shows up on that thing, or if you're riding a bike or running outside or whatever, the uh, calorie counter on your Garmin or whatever device you're using, that's not your friend either because that calculation is so far off that you're not gonna believe it. And the same goes for step counters because it's not just the amount of steps that you take, which you know obviously is better than nothing, but any kind of physical activity you wanna do, if you really wanna take advantage of it, you have to elevate your heart rate. And if you're just walking around all slow or doing whatever, you're not really elevating your heart rate, you're really not burning a whole lot of energy. Now, when we're talking about calorie burn, 
there's an awful lot of information that you need in order to accurately calculate calorie burn. And I don't even know if it's even accurate at that point. First of all, you have to calculate your metabolic rate. And that is how many calories does my particular body burn if I was laying down and doing nothing for 24 hours. That's difficult to do. You can get averages, you can actually use a, a calculation online to get that. Not perfectly accurate, but you know, obviously better than nothing. You know, what is your maximum heart rate? Uh, your max heart rate is basically the maximum you can push your heart rate up before you pass out or throw up or something. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh, the more you elevate your heart rate towards your maximum, the obviously the more energy your body expels. Your nutrition plays a big role in it, especially if you're vitamin deficient in something. You've got medical conditions that can cause that can cause you to retain fat. That doesn't help. And then there's always your genetics. Some people are just genetically engineered to burn more calories than other people. So you have to use all those variables to figure out what your calorie burn is going to be. And then you got to take your metabolic rate and remove it from that. I mean, see, there's so many things that go into that, that it's impossible to get an accurate reading on that. But I'll guarantee you this, you're not going to ride a bike for an hour and burn 800 calories. There's just no way. You're not going to get on a Stepmaster and do that for 40 minutes and burn six or 700 calories. It's nowhere near that. If I go out and I ride my bike hard, I mean, maximum hard for an hour, I'd say it's going to be maybe 400, 400, 420, 430, something like that. It ain't going to be that much. And, that, and I'm probably still estimating that high. So really, that's why it's so important to take care of what you're putting into your body. Because exercising does not give you the ability to just go ahead and eat whatever you want. Because that's the quickest way to derail yourself. Boom! Reality hits you hard, bro. Okay, tip number two. You have to treat this like a life change, not a diet. Like I said before, diets end. If you're talking about a life change, you're talking about permanently changing something in your life. For instance, the biggest thing I did was I was a big Coca-Cola drinker. That had to go away. The sugars have to go away. And it's not the worst thing in the world. I mean, I switched to diet soda for a while, then moved over to Coke Zero, which is basically the same thing. I personally don't have a problem with, with artificial sweeteners and things like that. But if you do, that's okay too. But in any case, sugar has to make its way out of your diet, at least for the most part. And we're not talking about changing your life all at once. We're talking about baby steps, little steps over time, over weeks, over months, over years, changing the way you eat. I used to be big into fast food. Like I said, big into the sugary sodas. First thing I did, started getting, instead of getting the super size, I get the medium size. Then I started saying, you know what? We don't need the soda, I'll get water. Then I started saying, okay, you know what? Don't, let's, let's look at the mayonnaise and all that stuff out of my burger. Then I moved over to, you know what? I'm just gonna start doing like, like a lettuce wrap, low carb burger that doesn't have any bread. Then it starts becoming, well, let's limit the amount of fast food we're getting down to maybe once or twice a week in the most and start cooking more at home. It's little steps over time. I didn't do all the stuff all at once. I just made little changes. I'd make some small adjustments, I'd drop some more weight, then make another adjustment and keep on going. And you know what that does? It eliminates a lot of those cravings that you get because you're not going cold turkey on anything. You're just taking little things away, a little bit at a time, giving your body a chance to adjust to it. And that is that is key. But you know what, if, if dieting works for you, that's fine, I'm not poo-pooing that. But if you're watching this video, Maybe it means it's not working out the way you wanted it to. Me think me body handle cookie different than most people. The problem with those diets, they're massive changes to the way you eat. And any diet can be really unsustainable in the long term. You're talking about taking major parts of your diet out completely and never going back to them again, ever. Which is basically what that is. And at some point, at some point, you're gonna splurge and you're gonna have a rush of cravings and you're gonna eat a whole bunch of stuff that you're not supposed to be eating and your body's gonna trip out and you're gonna gain a whole bunch of weight really quick. And I think that's what happens to most people. So tip number three is more of a question. And the question is, why are you in such a hurry? In our culture, I think everybody is in a hurry 
to get everything done. Even on television, you watch shows like The Biggest Loser, and it's a competition every week to see who can lose the most weight. And honestly, I watch that stuff, and I see somebody who lost five or six pounds in a week, and they're sad on television because they weren't the biggest loser and somebody else did better than them. And what, to me, I see somebody who lost five pounds in a week. That's amazing, but they're treated like they failed. And that's not the attitude that you need to have when you're trying to drop weight. Progress is progress. It doesn't matter if it's one ounce. It doesn't matter if you don't lose anything and you've changed the way you eat. It's still positive. Things like that happen. You just keep on going in the right direction. And it doesn't matter if it takes a month, a year, or 10 years. As long as you're working towards a goal, you're gonna be in good shape. Remember, how long did it take you to gain the weight that you wanted to lose? For me, it took, it took 10 years for me to gain all that weight and for me to get to the point where I needed to lose weight, where I desperately needed to lose weight, actually. And it took me a full seven years to drop it. Remember, concentrate, concentrate, concentrate on the progress. This is not a race. And if you really wanna treat it like a race, then it, it ain't no sprint. This would be a marathon. And at the end of the marathon, the prize is you getting your body back. And that's the important part. Wow. You know how to cut to the core of me, Baxter. One of the best parts of dropping weight over a longer period of time means you build real appreciation for how hard the work was and how long it took you to lose. When you take a long time to drop weight and you've changed your life in the, in the meantime, you gain serious appreciation for that. And then that way you are gonna be able to maintain that for years to come. I also gotta mention that if you drop weight really rapidly, that could be a serious health risk for you too. Especially if you're taking some kind of drug in order to do it. Really, you're starving yourself. That's, that's not really weight loss, you are malnourishing yourself in order to drop weight very quickly like that. You're probably losing muscle mass, you're probably losing bone density, uh, you're gonna be deficient in lots of vitamins in your body. It's not gonna look good, and that's why you see people that have lost weight like that, they really look droopy and everything else, probably really tired. That's not the way to do it. It's very risky, you can really mess yourself up. Even those TV shows where they have the weight loss, they mention that very prominently that consult your doctor before you drop weight and this and that, because it's, it's not always very safe to do that. And for me, the best part about taking your time dropping the weight is that it gives you plenty of time to develop good habits and for your body to adjust to those habits and for them to become habits, really. For instance, when you go to the gym, how many times do you need to go on a regular schedule before you kind of get into the swing of things and it becomes easier for you to go? It, it takes a little while. Same thing with changing the way you eat, same thing with changing anything in your life. You've got to make these adjustments over time and you've got to give yourself a chance to adjust to them before you start making other changes. Otherwise, you're going to be doomed. You're going to stress yourself out. It's not going to be good. Hey, by the way, if this is your first time here and you'd like to learn more about great low calorie recipes that will help you keep that weight off, then start now by subscribing to our channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. Okay, tip number four. Don't obsess about the scale. Don't worry about the number when you stand on that thing. When you do, when you do your weigh-ins, do it one time a week. I do it first thing in the morning on Friday. You get up, you get naked, you go to the bathroom, get everything out of your system, get on the scale. One time. You do it one time during the week. You don't do it any other time during the week. And you'll always do it in repeatable circumstances, meaning you want to be dehydrated to the certain amount, same amount. That's why you do it in the morning when you get up. You want to have everything out of your system that you can. And that's the only time you really want to weigh yourself. And then you want to kind of ignore the scale the rest of the week because your body is going to fluctuate based upon the time of day, how much water's in your system, if you have undigested food in your stomach, if you have digested food in your stomach and you haven't gone to the bathroom. There's so many things that go into what you weigh. You're going to see that thing bounce around a lot. It's going to drive you crazy. You can't obsess about the number that you see on the scale, the number of pounds. Remember, instead of worrying so much about the number you see, how about you look in the mirror and see if you see improvements? How does your clothing fit? That's the easiest way to tell. 
Is it looser? Does it start fitting better? Is it not binding in places? Well, then you're dropping weight. How does your body feel? Do you feel stronger? Do you feel more rested? Do you, do you feel like it's easier for you to get around? Do you have more energy? Those are all very important and those are big indicators of the overall condition of your body. If you're continuously getting smaller clothes and they just fit really good and they start looking like they do on the mannequin, doing a good job, doing a great job. Those of you who obsess about, about BMI, which basically it's a calculation done, uh, correlates between your weight and your height. There's a lot of online calculators that you can use in order to find that number. Keep in mind that BMI does not really account for muscle mass. It's just straight up height and weight. So if you're carrying more muscle mass, you're going to show higher on the BMI scale. And therefore, BMI is probably going to tell you that you're a little bit overweight if you've got a pretty good amount of muscle mass built up on you. So don't really worry too much about that number. Again, it's how you feel. It's how your clothing fits. Just keep repeating that to yourself because that's the thing that matters. Angle of approach. Compensate for warp and floor. Count for resistance due to dust modes. Okay, the fifth and final tip I have for you is a, a much shorter point to make. And that is not to stress about plateaus, slow progress, or setbacks. Those are all normal things. And if, especially if you're dropping a lot of weight, those things are going to happen. And when they do, you can't get stressed out about it. Just stay the course and you'll be good. Plateaus happen. They happen to me plenty of times. At least five or six times during, during my weight loss journey. I plateaued, I got stuck at a certain weight, I couldn't get it to go down, it sat there for about a week, week and a half or so, and then all of a sudden I lost a whole bunch of weight over the course of two or three days. It happens and it's going to happen, but when it, and when it does, all you got to do is just stay the course and eventually you'll kind of get over that hump. Setbacks happen too, I mean we're human beings. Sometimes you're going to do something, you're going to eat something you shouldn't, this and that, you're going to gain a little bit of weight, and there were plenty of times that I did gain weight too. During this journey, you'd have like a weekend, you'd have like a go out, have a big rich meal or whatever, a couple of them. You know, it's a birthday, you go and have some cake and ice cream and everything else. Well, it's going to happen over time. You're not going to give that stuff up, are you? Well, don't worry too much about it. Restart, get refocused, and then you'll be perfectly fine. But don't just throw your arms up and when you gain a couple of pounds or you can't drop anymore, you get stuck for a little bit. You're going to get through it. Just, just don't stress and you'll be fine. I hope the five tips I gave you will help you out a little bit, maybe get you on the road to losing some more weight. And if you got stuck somehow and you were just looking for some more encouragement and you happened upon this video, I hope you get out of it what you need. And if you don't, or if you need a little bit of help or you have some questions about something, then feel free to comment down below and I'd be happy to answer it and see if I can help you get on the right track. In case you didn't notice, my channel here is a cooking channel, so it doesn't really seem all that related. But really, Joe's Phenomenal is my super low calorie salad dressing line, which I actually started because of my weight loss in the first place. And then I just kind of expand that out into the recipes and everything else for the YouTube channel. But I thought this might be a nice addition to help some people out. In the future, we're going to be adding a lot of recipes here that are really geared towards low calorie, high protein meals that anybody's going to be able to make that could help you drop some weight as well. If you'd like an extra resource, you can also visit us online at joesphenomenal.com. Once again, my name is Joe. I'm so happy you watched this video and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.